Join me on this episode where I travel to the Great Bear Rainforest. During this trip, I see grizzly bears, orcas, eagles, and sea otters all in a single day's adventure. I will be sharing some photography tips and techniques to get photographs like these. So sit back and relax, because I'm excited to get started. If you are new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I am a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Morning everyone. It is uh, 5.30, I got up an hour ago, 4.30 this morning. And I made myself a coffee, and uh, now I'm on the computer looking on windy.com. And today is uh, filming and photographing grizzly bears. And we got to go um, by boat and up through certain channels and stuff. So checking wind as well as waves, uh, and then uh, whether or not we're going to get rain. I'm gonna prepare regardless, just because it's quite mountainous in through here. And uh, right now, it's actually pretty calm, especially in the afternoon, which is really nice. Uh, the best way to check weather is by looking outside, and it's looking quite nice. Along the Great Bear Rainforest is where we're gonna be looking today, so very excited and uh, we'll see what we see and I'm excited to take you along for the ride. Now like I said earlier it is springtime and you never know what the weather could bring we were very lucky to have beautiful calm waters and relatively clear skies. And of course there's other ways of travel like these float planes coming in. So once we got to our destination at the mouth of this inlet, we hopped into this flat bottom boat and this allows us to go up into the estuary, riding the tide up to get close to where the bears are eating the sedge grass. Now the first thing we noticed was this eagle nest and there's an eagle up there and then this one bathing down at the mouth of the estuary. Now at that point we seen a grizzly bear. So some people were looking at the grizzly bear but I was fixated on this eagle. He was wet, regal, washing his feathers and his wings and that is when I thought okay it's gonna fly. And with those wings stretched out and all the water droplets flying off this is where I got some beautiful shots with the sun coming in behind, freezing everything in time as the eagle flew to a nearby stump. Now, while the eagle is on this stump, it actually flaps its wings multiple times, kind of drying its feathers of water. So this is where I captured some shots with the wings spread out and the lighting look really nice with all those droplets. Now I'm switching between video and photos on my Nikon Z9. And I'm constantly thinking, do I want to take photos of the action that I'm seeing or do I want to take video? Now the eagle eventually flew off and we turned our focus onto the grizzly bear that we seen off in the estuary. There 
there's a big grizzly right over by the tree over here. And then we think there's a few more down this way. We spotted the first grizzly way off the tree line, and then there's these two grizzlies side by side later on that was a little bit further into the estuary. Now they're eating sedge grass, which has plenty of protein, and it's a great source of food for these grizzlies who have come out of hibernation, you know, a month, two months prior. They look very, very healthy, really big bears, and we made sure to keep our distance, and we were at the water's edge, and we did not go on land. Now the biggest issue with photographing grizzlies is the heat waves. And this bear was off in the water just having a bath and it was just super cute. But you can notice that there's some heat waves, especially way off in the back. So anytime you took any photographs, if you had land between you and the grizzlies, it's gonna be soft. So we moved our boat in and around still in the water but had more water between us and the grizzlies to minimize all the heat that was coming between us and the grizzlies to take clear sharp photographs now the biggest tip here is to make sure that your highlights aren't blown out the tips of their fur is quite bright in the sun so you gotta look at your histogram on the back of your camera to make sure that you're not blowing out those highlights. Now, as there's more foreground elements, like the grass in front of the grizzlies, I switch over to manual focus. That's because my autofocus tends to grab the blades of grass in front of their face. Now, when I switch over to manual focus, I also turn on peak focus display. Okay, we're gonna quickly talk about my exposure settings on the camera and my focus. I am shooting with the Nikon Z9 and the lens that I got is the Z lens. It's a 400 4.5 uh, and I've got a 1.4 teleconverter. Now for exposure, I am shooting manual mode with auto ISO. So that way if the bear is sitting there not really moving, I can kind of slow down my shutter speed, take some photos, my ISO is gonna be nice and low. As soon as it starts moving or if it's running or shaking its head in the water, I'm going to make sure that my shutter speed is cranked up to capture and freeze that moment. And I don't want to have to be worrying about, you know, all my other settings to balance out my exposure. So the auto ISO just floats um, to fill in that missing gap. Now, it's not always perfect. And I have this bear right here that I set up in my window to kind of... Uh, um, simulates what I'm doing out in the field and I got my monitor set up on this camera to kind of show you the highlights and the dynamic range that we're dealing with so the fur the tips of the fur is quite bright and then there's dark areas and I have it set to matrix metering so it's metering the whole scenario the whole thing so if this bear is in an environment that's all bright around it it's going to tell the camera okay it's majority the average of it is quite bright so we're going to darken it a little bit uh, so i still like that auto setting but it might make the subject a little too dark so that's where i use exposure compensation so there's a button here on the the nikon z lens you hold that down and you roll this wheel and you can turn up the brightness or down and sort of override the auto iso i also set up my lens so that one of the rings and there's two rings right here uh, this ring right here, I have it set up for exposure compensation as well. And I program that in the camera so that when I turn this ring, it brightens it up and it darkens it. So on the fly, I can quickly make fine tune adjustments to my exposure. One last thing is I have my histogram always up on my screen. So I can constantly look at that histogram and make sure that the the information is not piled up on one side or the other. Um, and that tells me whether it's nicely exposed or if it's blown out highlights or the shadows have gone complete black. So that's my setup for exposure. Let's talk about focus. My area focus mode is the wide area, full area mode. 
um, with my subject detection being wildlife set up. And that does a pretty good job. Like 90% of my shooting is great where the camera can pick up my subject and focus on it. And we're dealing with bears out in a, a field for the most part. Now, whenever there's branches or there's grass in the way, that's gonna bounce all over the place and maybe not grab onto the subject nearly as nice. So that's where I programmed one of these buttons or all of three of these buttons, I believe, uh, so that it is spot focus. Uh, now you can go into your camera settings down into the custom, um, custom mode here. Let's do it right now. So you can go down into custom menu settings, go to control, and then go down to custom control shooting. And here on the right hand side, you can see the lens and that you know, little button there highlighted in yellow. And when you click on it, you can select uh, what type of mode you want. And I want one of the area focus modes and I put it on single point area focus. So again, default, it's gonna find the subject in the whole scene. 90% of the time it captures it. When it doesn't and there's something in the way, I hold down this button hold it down and I push the back button and it focuses wherever that little spot is on the subject. Now, sometimes that can be a bit annoying having to constantly put that little box, that little point on the bear and keep getting focus uh, of the bear. So that's when my last uh, setting uh, that I um, go to is manual focus but I wanna make sure that there is some sort of indicator of where I'm actually focused because just looking through um, and focusing, I can't really see through the screen or whatever what is exactly in focus. I wanna make sure that I'm perfect in focus, especially if my shallow depth of field is, is quite narrow. So that's why you wanna go into your menu settings and you wanna go up to focus under custom settings menu and if you go down to A13, there is focus peaking. And that's where I have it turned on. Uh, and down at the bottom here, you, you select a highlights color. So if you're shooting blue jays, maybe you don't want blue as a highlighted color, maybe you want red. Um, and so you select a highlights color, you can pick your focus peak sensitivity. So whether it's uh, you know high or low, and that might depend on your depth of field. I have it select for two. So that way when I'm looking at the bear and I'm using manual focus, as soon as I turn this focus ring, that highlights color will come right up and whatever that is highlighted in my scene will be in focus. And during the shoot while I'm out in the boat, I use this 75% of the time. Now, before we go back into the Great Bear Rainforest to photograph more wildlife, I wanna to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a great platform for online courses in almost anything imaginable. Cooking, exercise, learning the guitar, or for photography, there is everything from beginner to pro. Now to help with my YouTube videos, I actually did a course by MKBHD where he taught how to script, shoot, and edit your videos. Now if you were a bit confused about exposure, focusing, or even camera settings, there are courses for that as well. Tons for photography and for photo editing, but it doesn't even stop there. If you need help with your business, maybe you're interested in cooking, or even how to do clay sculptures and bowls, which is what my wife likes to do, uh, there is courses on those as well, everything from beginner to pro. And for the first 500 people who click the link down below, you get your first month free. So if you like learning like I do, make sure to go ahead and check out Skillshare and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video.
It was so cool just to watch these two bears just be with one another, see their expressions and how they interact. Just out of curiosity, do you like the black and white photo better? Let me know down in the comments. Now during this time where they're chasing one another and playing around, I didn't take a whole lot of photos. You can see in the background, it looks like a blast furnace. And this is because the air, the atmosphere is somewhat warm, not crazy warm, I still have a jacket on, but it's the difference between that warm air and the cold surface of the ocean water that's coming up through the estuary. And what we're getting is that heat haze uh, that's in the background. Now, is there any way to avoid these heat waves? And the only way is to either get up super early so that there isn't a huge change in temperature, or you find another scenario where the temperature isn't as extreme so that the images are going to turn out a little clearer. And so this is our fourth grizzly that we saw along the water's edge. And the lighting was really nice because it was behind us. Now here we get the ocean and not a whole lot of heat haze or heat shimmer. And so the images are a lot clearer and we get that nice soft light on the whole bear here. So after an exciting time photographing grizzly bears and that eagle, we then headed for open waters to look for other wildlife. And it didn't take long before orcas popped up. Now British Columbia gets transient and resident orcas. And this is a transient, which is a larger out of the two. And it hunts other mammals like seals and sea lions. And what it's doing here is going along the coast and looking for any little coves and corners around rocks to nab some delicious prey. Now with the orca swimming so close to land, it makes for some great environmental shots. Now after a chill time with orcas along the coast, we then headed out into open waters and that is where we spotted some sea otters floating by. Now where there's one, there's usually more, but I didn't expect to see so many sea otters floating right by our boat.
Now when it comes to wildlife, you never know what you're going to see. You might see humpback whales, grizzly bears, black bears, black bears and their cubs, dolphins, porpoises. Sometimes all of them in the same day and other times you only get one or two. To increase your odds and have the best experience, I offer multi-day workshops. And if you're interested in those, there's a link down in the description. So if you like this content, please give me that thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. I am all geared up to go back out on another adventure today. So stay tuned, make sure to follow along. I'm excited to show you what I get up to.